Good morning, my name is Simon Fernandez. I'm working at the University of Grenoble and I will be presenting the work we did with Maciej Koczynski and Andrzej Duda on spam domain detection and how we used new domain properties to build an efficient and fast domain classifier able to detect spam domains after observing a single query to the DNS. Catching spammers is a matter of speed. Before the spamming campaign, they are hard to detect and after the spamming campaign, blacklisting them will be of relative use. The vast majority of spam domains follow this life cycle. First, spammers register a new domain and configure it. Then they start the spam campaign and wait for victims. Then the spam activity is detected and the domain gets blacklisted or taken down. But spammers just register a new domain and start over. The goal is to detect the spammers as early as possible to minimize the harm they do. We focused on data accessible in the early stages of this life cycle to detect them before the spam campaign. We used data from two main sources during this study. First, we used Farsight Passive DNS, a feed of aggregated and anonymized DNS queries and answers, and ICANN's CZDS platform, giving access to most GTLD zone files, allowing us to detect new domains for those uh, TLDs. Because as we saw in the beginning, most spam domains are recent, with close to no previous activity. So we focused on DNS traffic of newly active domains to reduce the amount of data to process, while keeping the domains that may be malicious. In order to increase their reputation and look legitimate, spam domains tend to configure some anti-spoofing protocols. The sender policy framework, SPF, is one of the most deployed mail security protocols. When sending a mail, nothing prevents the sender from forging the from field of the mail. So a malicious user could impersonate someone else. The SPF was built to prevent such trivial impersonation by adding a verification step at the receiver's mail server. When receiving a mail from alice.com, Bob's server will query the DNS for the TXT entry of alice.com. This record will contain a set of rules that will tell Bob's server which IPs are allowed to send mails on behalf of alice.com. This allows Bob's server to trust Alice's mail as it comes from a valid IP and drop Mallory's mail that comes from an unauthorized IP. The SPF rule set is stored in the, D in the TXT record of a domain, and each rule has the following structure. First, a qualifier telling, telling the server what to do if the mail matches the rest of the rule. Then the modificator and the target describe where to find the whitelisted IPs. For example, this rule tells that the mail is valid if the source IP is in the 1230-24 network, or if there is an A record of the source domain that points to the source IP, and all other IPs are invalid. From this simple protocol, we extracted features to detect spam domains. First, when the server receives a mail from alice.com, it will send a DNS TXT query for the alice.com domain. This means that if a spam domain sends email to thousands of different servers, there should be a significant increase in the number of requests to this domain. So we monitor the DNS traffic to TXT records of new domains to detect spikes that may be the very early phases of a spam campaign. We also detected that the SPF rules used by spam domains tend to be different from the rules used by benign domains. We saw that some rules, like the plus IP4 rules, are more common in spam domain configuration than rules like the plus, uh, the plus include that are more often used by benign domains. We also analyzed the targets of these rules, what IPs are whitelisted and what domains are included. To represent the, this information, we built a graph where each node is an IP, an IP range or a domain, and an edge between node A and B represents that node A has an SPF configuration pointing to node B. We saw interesting patterns in this graph, like the ones presented here, and we built some metrics to describe some graph properties. We focused on two main properties, neighbor degree and the proportion of neighbors already being in blacklists. Those metrics describe that if a domain has a custom configuration that is similar to the configuration of a known spam domain, it will probably be used to send spam in the future. Based on those features, so traffic profile, SPF rules, and graph, graph metrics, we built a classifier using the random forest algorithm. 
First, we only consider data that can be extracted from uh, the SPF configuration. So the rules and the graph. The results were less precise, but we can run this classifier on a single TXT record. This record can come from a passive DNS observation or an active scan. Then we try to refine the classification by adding the dynamic time analysis uh, of the features. The more traffic we can observe, the more precise the classification. Here are the results uh, of the classifier on those two different datasets. We computed the precision of the classifier for multiple configuration, but for example, we see that uh, with a dynamic dataset, we can accurately detect 80% of the spam domains while only having 0.5% of benign domains being incorrectly classified. We also compared the speed at which our system detects a spam domain compared to commercial blacklists. The results are presented in this graph. The positive values on the right are our domains where our system was faster, and the negative values on the left where it was slower than the blacklist. In 70% of the cases, our system correctly detected spam domains before commercial blacklists. And in 30% of cases, it was more than 24 hours faster. To conclude, detecting spam domain is a matter of speed. We want to detect them as early as possible so that we can blacklist them before the spam campaign. In this work, we classify newly active domains based on the SPF configuration and passive DNS traffic. Our classifier reaches high detection rates with low false positives, even from a single TXT query. This work highlights that those features could substantially improve existing spam detection systems by leveraging features available in the very early stages of a spam domain lifecycle. Thanks a lot for your attention. There are many more details in the paper, so please check it out if you want more precise description of the system. In any case, I'll be happy to directly answer any question that you may have.